Okay, so in this video, we're going to be going over bars and I bars. Uh, in the last video, we created a function that will check if a new candle has been formed on the current chart. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, you can go back and watch that one now and then come back to this video. Okay, if you haven't already, you can open up the MetaQuotes uh, editor here. And what we're going to be doing is making some changes to the is new candle function that we uh, created in the last video. Um, I'm going to scroll down into this function here and all this function is doing is returning true or false whether a new bar has been uh, formed. And if it has been formed, it's in the on tick function. And if the new candle is true, it means it's been formed and we're going to run whatever block of code is within these curly braces here. Uh, so what I have right now is just a simple print function that's going to let us know that a new candle was formed. Okay, and I also have a uh, function that I've done already. It just draws a trend line. Uh, so when I call that draw trend line function, I put in the parameters that I want. And right now it's going to draw a trend line on the high of the monthly uh, previous bar and the low of the monthly previous bar. Okay, and I'll show you that here in a second uh, when we hop over to the charts. And right now, the way this is set up, we're using bars and we're going to be changing this to use I bars. Uh, so I'll show you why here in a few minutes, um, because as of right now, this is new candle is going to be ran on the current chart. We have the EA. So let's hop over to the charts and let's drag and drop our is new candle EA onto the chart. And there's our lines. We've got, we're on the monthly chart right now. So there's the high of the previous candles month and the low of the previous candles month. Um, so, Obviously, the reason I've chosen this is because this monthly uh, high and uh, low is not going to change. Um, now, at the beginning of the month after, when this creates a new bar, then we're going to want to move these lines to this high and this low, whatever one is formed once this bar is finished being created. So that's why we're going to be using the I bars instead of the bars. Uh, so let's hop back over. Uh, actually, before we head back over to the editor, let's put this on the one minute. And you can see that right now, before we, uh, when we close this, you're going to see that it's going to run this. So we've got a new candle formed and then it ran the draw trend line function, ran the draw trend line function again. Now you can see a new candle was just formed on the one minute and it did it again. Let us know that a new candle was formed. It ran the trend line function. And the reason we're getting this twice is because we are running up in the uh, block of code here, we're creating two trend lines. So we're running it the one time and running it the next time. And I put a simple uh, print at the beginning of this function that's going to let us know that it ran. Okay, so that's why you're seeing it twice is because we're calling this function twice within this block of code, uh, creating the high and then creating the low. So now what we don't want is to have this function being called every minute or if we're on the five minute chart every five minutes we only want it uh, we only want it called on the beginning of every monthly chart so let's go over and make some changes to the to the is new candle function and have it set up so that it's only going to run on the monthly new bars so the first changes that we're going to make is changing this bars into the I bars. Uh, so let's do that right now. Type in I bars. And if you want to highlight this and then hit F1, you can pull up the I bars uh, in the documentation here and then read through which parameters uh, you got to pass through into this uh, I bars function. Um, so we can see up here that we're passing through a string, which is of the symbol. And then we're also passing through a integer, uh, which is the time frame. Uh, and then it gives you a little example down here below. Um, so let's go back to the editor and we will put in our parenthesis. And then you can see right here, it populates uh, what we need to pass through as the parameters. Um, so we're going to type in the symbol. Okay. And then we're going to type in 
and uh, we'll go with the monthly time frame for the moment. Uh, and then we're gonna just copy and paste this iBars function and get rid of the bars down here. Um, now this bar is just a predefined uh, variable that returns the number of charts on the um, current chart and the iBars function returns the number of bars on the uh, specified chart that we're passing through right here. Uh, so let's get rid of this bars and put in our iBars. Okay, and the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is because we want to be able to change this when we call the isNew function. So we're gonna pass through a parameter into this function and it's going to be an integer uh, for the data type and we're gonna pass through, uh, we'll call this variable time frame. Okay, and then we're gonna take this time frame and get rid of this period monthly and put in the time frame. So whatever parameter or period that we pass through uh, when we're calling this function is going to be what is called for the bars uh, function here. And we're gonna do the same thing down here. So into the time frame. And the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is change this static uh, integer variable that we've declared first here. Um, because now that we're gonna be making multiple instances of this is new candle function, uh, we're gonna have different uh, static variables as well. So we're gonna take this and put it up to the top uh, in the where the globals are. So let's just cut this out of the way and go scroll right to the top here and paste it in. And instead of having T bars, we're gonna name this uh, current. CR for current bars on chart. And then we're gonna declare another uh, variable and it's gonna be called, uh, let's call this the monthly bars on chart. Okay, we'll go back down to our function. And in this function, when we call it, we're gonna have to call in another parameter, which is going to be, um, these static variables here. Uh, so we can call this, uh, we'll leave it as T bars on chart, which we have down here already set up. And that's gonna be of an integer data type, okay? So when we call this is new candle function, we're gonna be passing through uh, the time frame, which is gonna be the period and also the um, variable that's static that we're going to use to compare it to the I bars function uh, so that we know if a new candle has been uh, formed on the time frame that we're specifying. Okay, uh, so now the next thing that we're going to have to do is if the I bars um, chart is equal to the T bars on chart, then we're gonna return false. And that is getting through passed through with uh, this parameter here. But what we're seeing right now is if these aren't equal, then a new bar is formed, but we're just passing on this information into this variable. And this variable isn't stored as a static variable anymore. We're just using it as the variable within this function. So what we need to do, instead of having this one here um, being equals uh, to the I bars, we have to bring in our static variables here. Okay, so all we're gonna do is put in a couple if statements. We're gonna go if time frame equals period current chart. Then we're gonna use our static current bars on chart variable And that is going to be equal to our I bars. Uh, so now, when we the next time we run this, we can we can pass through our current bars on chart for the current period, and it's going to do the comparison here to check to see if a new bar was formed on the current chart. 
Okay, and now all we got to do, can't forget our semicolon. Uh, we're going to do the same if statement, but we're going to use it for the monthly because um, we only want these trend lines drawn at the beginning of every month, right? On the monthly new candle. So we're going to do the next one as if time frame equals our period monthly. Then we're going to have our monthly bars on chart is going to equal and we can cut and paste our I bars function right there as well. So, and then once we've set our static variables to the bars on chart, um, then we can return true. Okay. Now you'll notice I don't have curly braces after this if statement, uh, because when you're running one line of code after an if statement uh, in MQL4, then you don't need to actually do the uh, use the curly braces. Uh, you can short form it like this, which is a bit nicer. Otherwise, you're going to have um, a little bit more lengthy code. So you can stay away from having it like that on both sets. Um, so we'll keep it shorthand there. Okay, and there we go. We'll set, we're set for that. Now, the next thing that we have to do is come up into our uh, is new candle function. And we're going to create a new if statement so if and then we can tab it and it will fill us in with the uh, conditional statement here and then our curly braces for us so let's type in is new candle and now when we do our open parenthesis it's going to ask for a couple parameters and that's our time frame and our bars on chart so our time frame for the monthly is going to be period monthly and then it wants the variable so we're going to pass through the static variable that we set for this and that's going to be monthly bars bars on chart and then we're going to take our two trend line cut those out of there and we are going to put them down into this one here so now we're going to have this tr these trend lines drawn every new candle that's printed on the monthly chart so every one month candle um, we're going to draw the new trend line okay and then uh, that is how that is going to work and now when we compile it we're going to get an error because we haven't passed through the parameters on our original uh, current chart is new candle function so let's compile it and you can see wrong parameters. So let's go up here and pass in the period for the current chart that we are on and then pass in our current bars on chart. And now this is set up. So every time we're going to get just a simple print that a new candle has formed. Uh, now we can hit compile. And we've got an unexpected token. Let's just see where this is coming up here. So our error is right here on our if statement. Uh, see if you guys can figure this one out here. Pause the video and have a look at this code and see why we'd be getting an unexpected token error. Okay, so when we look at the if statement, an if statement has to have an open and a closed parenthesis. Uh, but right now we have an open parenthesis and no closed parenthesis because if we go to the is new candle, we've got our open and it's closed off right here as well. But we don't have a closed parenthesis for our if statement. So we'll close that up, if statement off. We'll hit the compile and now we got rid of our errors there. So um, we are good to go. We're going to head over to the charts here and double check our function, make sure everything's running properly. Um, so you can see uh, on every tick, whichever chart we're running, we're going to every new candle, we're going to print this off. 
Uh, and then when we get on the monthly chart a new candle, we are going to initially, on the drop of the EA, we're going to run the function, draw the trend lines. So we should see this right off the hop a couple times, and then we won't see this again for a month. Uh, and we'll only see this one here. So let's head over to the charts and make sure and see if everything's running okay. Hit F4. And we're just going to drag and drop our is new candle EA onto the chart. Hit OK. Wait for a tick to come through here. You can see that it's initialized and there's the tick. So we drew. Uh, we ran through the first one here. It says, is new candle formed? We're on the monthly chart. So we ran and drew our trend lines uh, because our uh, static variable didn't equal the number of bars on chart. So we ran the code at least once on the initialization. And now we won't run this block of code again for a month. And we won't even, because we're on the monthly chart, we won't run this is new candle for a month too if we just left this up and running. So let's head down to the one month or the one minute chart. Okay, and now you can see that we reinitialized over on the one minute. And because we have a static variable, it's not running this trend line function. Okay, it's only running the new candle formed function and we'll wait for another uh, candle to be formed. Okay, so there you have it. So we've ran our first um, is new candle formed. We've created a new one minute candle and we won't run the other one now for a month. So um, that's it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, again, quickly, we will go back to the code here and just uh, confirm what we've done. We have set up two static integer uh, variables, uh, one for the current chart and then one for the monthly bars on chart total. Uh, and this is set up at the top where the global var variables can be declared. Uh, and then we've created um, the is new candle function right here, passing through a couple parameters, the uh, time frame, which is the period, and also the bars on chart, which is our static variables uh, to store the um, bars on chart data. Okay, we're using the I bars, which passes through two parameters, the symbol and the time frame. And if it is equal to our static variable, then we're going to return false. And then once this uh, I bars, um, which is the number of bars on the specified chart here, uh, is not equal to the bars on chart, then we're going to reset our uh, variables to the bars on chart and then return true and it will run the code. And also, we don't need this line of code anymore. I just left it there because this was part of the original, but we can comment this out. We can take this out. We actually don't need that anymore. Uh, recompile and that is it. I uh, hope you guys liked this tutorial and we will see you in the next one.